Good morning, everyone. And thank you for joining us in this session focused on shipping opportunities for international trade. My name is George Hansen. I'm president of the Vancouver Island Economic Alliance and of the Foreign Trade Zone Vancouver Island. I will be moderating today's session. It's our pleasure to host this session on behalf of the Port of Nanaimo, DP World and Westwood Shipping Lines. I also wish to acknowledge that the Duke Point Terminal, which is the focal point of today's presentation, is in the unceded territory of the Snanaimuk First Nation. Foreign Trade Zone Vancouver Island was designated to the Vancouver Island Economic Alliance by the Government of Canada in 2018. FTZVI is the only non-government regional FTZ in Canada. This means that we can help facilitate duty and tax deferral opportunities for anyone in the island region involved with importing and exporting materials and goods. During the next 60 minutes, we will hear detailed presentations from DP World and Westwood Shipping Lines. There will be brief opportunity to ask clarifying questions after each of the two main presentations. And directly following the presentation portion of our time together, you are invited to participate in a round table of up to 30 minutes so that opportunities can be explored in greater detail. Until that time, we respectfully request that you keep your cameras and mics turned off. Now I'm happy to introduce Jason Michelle, who is Vice President of Business Development with the Port of Nanaimo. Jason? Thank you, George. Good morning, everyone. And thank you all very much for taking this time to be with us. And a big thanks to George and the VAIA team for their work in bringing this all together. As George mentioned, my name is Jason Michelle, and I'm the Vice President for Business Development for the Port of Nanaimo. This webinar is intended to highlight services surrounding the current and future short sea and international deep sea shipping through the Duke Point Terminal here in Nanaimo. As a Canadian Port Authority, our main focus and mandate is working with our communities, government and stakeholders, providing trade enabling infrastructure and opportunities. As a part of this mandate, we're excited to have recently signed a long term partnership and lease with a world class terminal operator DP World. And we've been fortunate to receive funding from the BC Economic Recovery Plan and from the Government of Canada National Trade Corridor Fund. We're focused on two main streams, short sea shipping, barging, and international vessel shipments of import export. With hundreds of undeveloped commercial industrial acres within five to 10 kilometers of the Duke Point Terminal, which is also in close proximity to ferries, airport and rail, we're well positioned to expand direct shipping services to and from Vancouver Island while avoiding the congested Vancouver roadways. And given that industrial land is in very short supply in Greater Vancouver, we see exciting potential for Duke Point playing an important role serving warehousing, distribution and manufacturing needs for Western Canada, while improving import and export efficiencies for Vancouver Island. Our presenters from DP World and Westwood Shipping Lines will share a lot of information with you in a short period of time. Please know that in essence, what we're seeking to convey is that we have opportunity to send and receive shipments directly to and from Duke Point to and from anywhere in the world. We stand at the cusp of a new generation of import and export opportunities. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Jason. It is now my pleasure to welcome the Honorable Rob Fleming, BC Minister of Transportation and Infrastructure. Minister Fleming. Okay, thank you so much uh, for that introduction, George. I don't know if you can see me because uh, I'm about to start my video here. See, there had to be there had to be one speaker that would uh, have a Zoom problem as we get underway here. Uh, I hope you can all hear me. Uh, I do want to uh, really thank uh, uh, and uh, express my pleasure at being with you uh, here this morning. I indeed am uh, have the privilege of being uh, the province's uh, transportation and infrastructure minister. 
I want to begin by recognizing that I'm speaking to you from the Lekwungen People's Traditional Territories, the Songhees and Esquimalt First Nations, and uh, bring my thanks to both the Vancouver Island Economic Alliance and the Nanaimo Port Authority for bringing us together today. Uh, we all know what a huge impact uh, COVID-19 has had on commerce, trade, uh, and in our personal lives and our communities. It's been felt across every sector, and it's been a stark reminder uh, just how much we rely on an efficient transportation network and also how important that is to our economic recovery as a province. Um, it's really important here on the island, obviously, where uh, goods and raw materials uh, have to be truck shipped uh, or flown to customers on the mainland or all over the world. Uh, that's a reality, whether you're a lumber company or an agri-food producer or a small business that's manufacturing products uh, that are part of a sub supply chain uh, globally. We know that uh, currently port capacity isn't enough uh, to maximize our economic potential, nor that of the province of BC. Although we see encouraging investments uh, all over the province that our, our province has been very proud to support, uh, recently investing $40 million uh, in improvements at the port of Prince Rupert and the Duke Point Terminal in Nanaimo. And I very encouraged that uh, perhaps later this year or, or sometime next year, uh, the uh, Port of Prince Rupert may actually surpass the Port of Montreal in terms of volumes of trade materials, giving us the number one and two ports uh, in the country. These projects uh, obviously support increasing our capacity, which is what we need to address uh, demand at busy uh, times in our growing ports. I want to congratulate uh, everyone who played a hand uh, on this uh, at this meeting uh, on the recent Duke Point lease agreement that was announced uh, in February at the turn of the new year. Uh, this expansion will obviously make it easier for you to get your finished products to market and it will help you acquire the inputs needed to produce the goods you sell. And the increased access to overseas markets uh, is a key uh, factor in helping diversify customer bases and resilience uh, in the global economy. In addition to these long-term trade benefits, these, these projects uh, can help create good paying jobs uh, that support our local communities. That's what we're all interested in as political and business leaders uh, here on Vancouver Island. The government's uh, commitment to economic recovery was indeed the central focus of the budget that we introduced uh, into the legislature uh, last week. We are supporting you and business organizations like you all over the province uh, by doing things like making record investments uh, in infrastructure to keep our economy moving, to access new customers in overseas markets. I'm very pleased that in my ministry, for the first time ever in our province's history, we will soon have six concurrent major transportation projects on the go at once. This includes uh, aging infrastructure replacement like the Patello Bridge. It includes investments in Highway 91 and 17, uh, the Delta Port uh, Way upgrade project, uh, the Kicking Horse Canyon that 30% uh, of the volume on that highway to Alberta is, uh, is, is trucking uh, uh, containers. Um, the uh, Broadway subway line, which of course is one of the busiest transportation corridors in North America. Uh, we have begun boring tunnels there, and we also have projects uh, upcoming on the George Massey Crossing and the Surrey Langley Skytrain. I really appreciate virtual sessions like this and the free flow of ideas between government and organizations like yours. That is so important, and we want to ensure that we're well positioned to support the growth of Vancouver Island businesses by making smart investments uh, in infrastructure. And uh, the way we get things done, the way we grow our economy is by working with partners like you. And that's how we address the many challenges that we face together as a province uh, and uh, turn those challenges into a brighter future for all of us. So just wanna conclude by saying COVID-19 is not over. As we know, we're in a third wave. We can see the light at the end of the tunnel. If I can use that overused expression once again, I'm very pleased that uh, by no later than July 1st, every British Columbian will have at least a single dose of vaccine We'll start to see uh, some of the restrictions that have been necessary to put in place to keep people and communities safe that last through the May long weekend uh, become lifted and hopefully we will be able to recover a summer that looks somewhat normal. But I want to thank everybody in the business community who've been keeping their employees safe, who've been keeping goods and services moving and keeping a strong economic recovery of which we're seeing very good signs of already, even as we continue to battle the health emergency that COVID-19 has, has uh, presented. So. Thank you for the invitation to be here this morning and uh, thank you uh, and good luck with the deliberations later today. I look forward uh, to working with you in the very near future.
Thank you very much, Ms. Minister Fleming. And we, we certainly uh, share your enthusiasm and we see lots of opportunity uh, here on Vancouver Island with our population of Vancouver Island now greater than in several Eastern provinces and, and approaching some of the other Western provinces even, uh, you know, rushing towards a million people. Uh, we appreciate the province's investment and support and, and understanding that the, the island economy is, uh, is emerging and changing rapidly. And uh, thank you very much again for, for joining us today and for your investment in the, the Duke Point facility. Thank you and stay strong, everyone. We now turn to uh, Brady and Tabaret to share an overview of DP World and explain opportunities to access the rest of the world from the Duke Point Terminal. Uh, if you have a clarifying question to ask, please type it into the chat box and uh, we'll try to get to it uh, when they conclude their, their presentation. Welcome, uh, Brady and Tabaret. Thank you for the introduction, George, and thank you to VAIA for hosting today's event. We're excited for the opportunity to provide more information about our services at DP World and to co-present with our friends at Westwood Shipping Lines. To all the participants on the call, hello and thank you for joining us today. We appreciate you taking the time to join us. Uh, as George mentioned, my name is Brady Erno. I'm the Senior Commercial Manager at uh, DP World. Um, I'm joined by some of my colleagues from DP World here today who will help me to answer some of the questions that the group may have about our services later on in the roundtable discussion. Uh, we also have our commercial director, Tabaret Dominguez, who I'm going to turn it over to after I go through our agenda so that he may provide some background on DP World, as well as some brief introductory comments. So just looking at our agenda for today, we're going to run through the following uh, pieces of information that uh, we hope will, will be good value for, for you as the listeners. Uh, DP World's uh, global, can, global and Canadian terminal presence uh, we'll be speaking about, as well as our terminal at Duke Point, including the expansion plans and our capability for handling deep sea vessels and the recently expanded barge service. So I'll turn it over to you, Tabri, uh, to provide a few comments. Thank you, Brady. Uh, yes, hi, uh, good morning, everyone. Um, uh, so I'm Tabari Dominguez. I'm the commercial director for DP World in Western Canada. Uh, so first of all, yeah, I echo Brady's words in terms of uh, thank you to Bahia for hosting this event. And, uh, and it's a pleasure to, to share this stage uh, um, with the uh, with the transportation minister and uh, as well as uh, some of our key partners of uh, the Naimo Port Authority and Westwood Shipping, uh, so we we start with a brief introduction of uh, of DP World. Um, as uh, some of you uh, may know by now, we are a global terminal operator. Um, we handled last year uh, 71 million GEUs globally, which uh, is, uh, is very close to 10% of uh, all containers uh, handled globally uh, move through DP World terminals. Um, and we are also an organization that evolved from being uh, purely a terminal operator uh, to be end-to-end um, -end, uh, trade facilitator or trade enabler. Um, and uh, a true example of that is, uh, is the activities that we are doing in Vancouver Island and particularly at Duke Point uh, to support uh, trade to and from the island. Yeah, next one. So if you look at uh, the growth that DP World has had and the capacity that we are bringing into the market, uh, this slide highlights that growth. Uh, we currently have uh, four deep sea terminals on the west coast uh, and uh, one on the east coast. Uh, but if you look at uh, where we were, uh, let's say in 2014, when we had only the center terminal in downtown Vancouver, uh, then in 2015, DP World acquired Prince Rupert. Uh, 2017, we already expanded Prince Rupert uh, and also acquired St. John. Um, last year, we uh, acquired Fraser Surrey Docks, which is uh, now DP World Fraser Surrey. Um, we are currently expanding the uh, Center Terminals and also Prince Rupert. Um, then 2023, we will be expanding Prince Rupert again. Uh, this expansion for, uh, for DP World Nanaimo will also be coming online as well as an expansion in St. John. Uh, and then after that, uh, second container terminal in Prince Rupert. 
So you're looking at, um, let's say, almost a nine-fold increase in capacity over a period of uh, uh, approximately 15 years. Um, so, so this is the capacity that DP World is bringing in order to support uh, trading and support the market in Canada. Uh, next, Brady. Yeah, so just uh, now just some pictures of, uh, of some of these facilities that were mentioned in the previous slide. Uh, Prince Rupert, um, the closest uh, deep sea terminal to, um, to, to, the, to Asia. Uh, then we have Vancouver. Um, this one is on the Burrard Inlet, uh, serving the local Vancouver market, uh, but uh, connected also uh, to uh, to eastern part of the country and the whole North America through the two railroads. Uh, next one, uh, we have Fraser Surrey. Uh, this one is a multi-purpose uh, terminal uh, located in, in the industrial heart of uh, Vancouver on the Fraser River. And uh, then we go into the focus for the for today discussion, which is uh, Duke, Point, Duke Point Terminal um, in in Nanaimo. Yeah. So on this one, uh, I mean, it has been highlighted by some of the speakers already, uh, but uh, this has been a, a major milestone for us, is that now we have a long-term agreement with the Nanaimo Port Authority. Um, and at the same time, we have announced an uh, expansion plan for the terminal, uh, which includes uh, contribution from several uh, key stakeholders, including the, uh, the, the Nanaimo Port Authority, the federal government, uh, but in particular, the BC uh, provincial government that uh, contributed with 15 million to, uh, to this expansion that will entail a cost of uh, $105 million in total. Uh, so we are very grateful for that. And, um, and this, uh, this expansion and this capacity that we are bringing to the market will ensure the long term, um, uh, let's say, access to, to capacity for the, for the trade on, on Vancouver Island. Thank you, and uh, over to you, Ray. Thank you, Tavri. Um, so just a little bit more uh, detail now in regards to that expansion and what's going to take place uh, at Nanaimo. Um, so it's a, from a timeline standpoint, it's expected to be, take about two years uh, from now, uh, so by 2023, that we would see uh, the expansion be completed. Um, the project will entail expanding the existing berth length from the current 182 meters to 325 meter length. Uh, this is being done more of the larger vessels that we call Nanaimo now and in the future. And there's already a 13.5 meter draft or water depth uh, for the vessels at the berth, which will be sufficient for, for the vessels intending to call at, uh, at Nanaimo in, in the present time. Um, the existing dock crane will be replaced with two larger dock entry cranes uh, to expand the terminal's lift capacity, uh, as well as our ability to efficiently turn vessels by having two cranes working simultaneously. A new warehouse will be built for cargo staging and storage, uh, improvements to the truck gate for both brake bulk and uh, container cargo, and a new maintenance and administration uh, administrative, administrative <laughs> building will be constructed. Uh, all of this is going to contribute towards the terminal ramping up to have the capacity for handling the current volumes uh, move more efficiently, as well as handling higher volumes in the future. Uh, so, uh, first item we want to talk about uh, is, is the deep sea calls. Uh, now, uh, when I differentiate those two, I know a couple of people have mentioned it already. Uh, I'm referring to the ocean going vessels uh, directly calling at, at Nanaimo. Um, so, in this concept, we see the future of the terminal in Nanaimo as deep sea ocean services calling at, at Nanaimo on a regular basis. Um, it's a spotty at the moment uh, on, a, on more of a charter type basis, uh, but uh, we, we do envision this uh, to become a more regular um, service that, that can call into Nanaimo and connect uh, to, to market access around the world for, for Vancouver Island customers. Um, we're setting ourselves up with this expansion to have the capability and infrastructure to host the business um, as, as this uh, continues to grow. Um, Duke Point being a multi-purpose terminal, uh, which means they handle vessels and cargoes as brake bulk or in containers. 
Um, so we continue to grow and we seek partners such as our friends at Westwood Shipping Lines who can support the Vancouver market with their multi-purpose vessels. Uh, so we hope to develop that commitment as you can see some photos here and I know Matthew's got some more coming up of, of the recent call in April um, to Nanaimo of the Westwood vessels. Uh, we, they, we're currently working uh, with, uh, with Westwood uh, as well as uh, um, their customers and our mutual customers I should say uh, to bring more of that volume uh, in the future through the terminal uh, as well as other uh, deep sea uh, service options and shipping lines uh, to call it the Nanaimo terminal. So the other concept that we wanted to talk about today is, uh, is short sea shipping. Um, so we probably heard that term a lot. Um, and just for anybody who's unfamiliar with it, it's, it's generally used to refer to cargo transport that relies on barges and waterways in and around in a, port, a port to complement the use of trucks, railways, and deep sea vessels in transporting containers over short distances around the region. Very popular in Europe and, and Asia and something that we think uh, can be a, a good value for, for customers here in, in the lower mainland and on the Vancouver Island. Um, so to this point, DP World has been running a successful short sea shipping service between Nanaimo and Centrum since 2012. And we've just, as of this month, expanded the service with the overall objective of connecting Vancouver Island customers to deep sea marine terminals and vessels. Adding Fraser Surrey to the barge road creates access to more international trade lanes from Vancouver Island. And I'll show you a map in a few minutes that's going to outline just what I mean by that and, and it'll uh, really outline the, the different uh, markets that uh, that'll be accessible uh, via now having Fraser Surrey connection. Um, but the benefit that we see in short sea shipping compared to other options is that the truck and trailer do not have to stay with the container for the crossing to and from Vancouver Island. This is a load on, load off barge. You can see in the photo here, this is a photo at, uh, uh, at Fraser Surrey. Um, so using the, uh, the dock gantry cranes to load containers to and from um, the, uh, the vessel. So it's a, we feel it's an efficient use of uh, containers and, and the equipment that, that moves them around, such as the truck and trailer to, to not have to stay with the container for that transit. Um, it also removes that short haul leg uh, from, uh, to get to the deep sea terminal once the container arrives uh, back to the lower mainland. If it's an export lower that's coming from Vancouver Island, now you're connecting directly to the deep sea terminal where it's gonna load onto that uh, deep sea vessel for, uh, for um, furthering on to the, to the destination. Um, so I'm just going to flip over now to that. Oh, pardon me. I want to mention as well the, the environmental impact. Uh, I know this is uh, probably goes without saying, but uh, obviously this takes off, uh, you know, by having um, containers loading onto the barge reduces the number of trucks uh, on our roads and, and the ferry routes. Um, and so we believe that there's a really positive impact that, that can come from, uh, from the expansion of this service and the additional volume that we'll, we'll move upon. Next one here. So uh, this is a map that uh, outlines uh, locations of the terminals. Um, so Nanaimo, obviously here uh, over on Vancouver Island, uh, our downtown terminal at Centrum uh, in Vancouver and uh, Fraser Surrey uh, along the banks of the, uh, the Fraser River there. So that's the weekly route uh, that, and I'll show you the map with the actual uh, schedule, um, or probably not the map, but the, the schedule itself uh, for the barge uh, route, but this is the route that it will take. Um, so I've got two slides here that uh, show the destination and origin ports uh, that the Vancouver Island customers will be connected to. Um, now this first one is for the Nanaimo to Centrum route. Um, so it's in the existing service that uh, has been running, as I mentioned earlier, since 2012. Um, and so it's really focused on the Trans-Pacific trade lane as far as those uh, vessels that call it at Centrum. And, and so you can see some of the ports of call um, in China, Japan, and Korea um, that are, are connected to uh, by, the, uh, by the barge service. Now you're getting ready to see a whole bunch more red arrows. <laughs> Here is uh, the connection into, into Fraser Surrey uh, with, the, with the short sea uh, shipping service. Uh, you can see the market access really expands. Uh, and so the reason for that is Fraser Surrey, it's a niche terminal uh, from a container traffic standpoint. Um, part of the reason behind that is because we are draft limited. It's 11 and a half meters uh, in the Fraser River for the larger ships to be able to come up and, and call it Fraser Surrey. Um, so what the, from a negative standpoint, that does take us out of the, the larger vessels, you know, the famous ones like the Emma Maersk uh, are, are never going to be able to call up the Fraser River. But what it does do is uh, it, it links us up with, with niche services, container services, um, things like the Australian New Zealand service, which has been calling for many, many years at Fraser Surrey, uh, as well as uh, the connections down to Central and South America um, and into Europe. We have a service that, that serves the, uh, the Mediterranean as well as North Europe. Um, um, and even over to the American uh, East Coast, for that matter. One of the new uh, connections, you see the, the shortest red arrow here is, is the Alaska service, which we now have a, a bi-weekly uh, service calling Fraser Surrey um, for, that connects uh, to Alaska and, and to the Far East. Uh, so, so lots of options, lots of potential there that uh, we hope will uh, provide some more solutions for, for folks uh, on, on the Vancouver Island that uh, um, may not be uh, there now or may not be aware of right now. 
Um, so as promised, this is the schedule uh, for the barge service itself. So you can see uh, every week, like really our focus when we when we came into creating this schedule was we needed reliability and consistency uh, for our customers. Uh, we needed uh, our customers to know that if they were going to drop a container off and export booking off at, at Nanaimo to load onto a, a deep sea vessel within the lower mainland, that they knew it was going to get there and that it would reach within the earliest receiving dates and, and cut off timelines. And that's really what we've designed this, this schedule around. So you can see on Monday, um, each week is, is our first sailing uh, and it, the barge has worked on Monday uh, at Nanaimo and then it transits to, to Fraser Surrey for Tuesday. On Wednesday it moves down to, uh, to sand term uh, to complete that uh, cycle. Thursday is an idle day or potential schedule recovery day. Um, Friday uh, we're back to Nanaimo again and then returns direct to sand term on, on the Saturday. Uh, again we have Sunday as a buffer and then we start all over again on Monday. Um, so you can see in the slide here, it says phase one, as far as the, the first uh, voyage that, that started uh, here in April. And really the reasoning behind this is that uh, we've got some buffer days in there. We, we envision um, and we've already seen great interest in the barge service. Um, and as that continues to grow, uh, we want to have that flexibility to be able to grow along with it, whether that be more barges or more frequent sailings. Um, we've got lots of options and potential to be able to keep up with, uh, with the demand on, on the service. Okay, just want to flip over. So uh, I want to talk about both deep sea and, and short sea shipping um, standpoint uh, for the strategic advantages uh, for working with Duke Point, uh, the Duke Point terminal uh, in Nanaimo. Um, and some of the bigger pieces that, uh, you know, when we consider the, the trade environment within Vancouver, um, flexible container receiving timelines um, at the truck gate in Nanaimo is, is really a huge benefit. Um, it's, I think it's a welcome relief to shippers uh, who may struggle with uh, the competitive nature of getting reservations at the terminals in the lower mainland. Uh, you know, it's an age old problem that, uh, you know, we're, we're a busy port uh, in Vancouver and uh, it's um, you know, reality of, of just trying to get as much volume through as possible. And really this barge service and, and uh, being able to potentially have deep sea vessels calling at uh, um, at Nanaimo to be able to take the, the volume there. That's that's some welcome relief, I believe, for, for the Vancouver port, um, as well as uh, some good advantages for the customers um, who are, are booking through, through Nanaimo. Um, empty container supply. Uh, so we're working with uh, many, many container lines uh, um, to offer empty container supply at Nanaimo. So this means that we'd be able to have a supply, a stock of, of empty containers um, at the terminal in Nanaimo to be able to supply export shipments, as well as for import shipments to be able to return empties back to Nanaimo um, and not have to worry about getting them back across um, the uh, barge service, or pardon me, uh, barge or ferry services to do that. So quick sample, just uh, as things presently stand, we actually have quite a few agreements in place where we've got empties on the ground in Nanaimo presently uh, with the lines like Costco, CMA, CGM, uh, Evergreen, Maersk, Double OCL, as well as our friends at Westwood Shipping Lines. Um, we can offer integrated barge and trucking services. So the container can be brought right to your site or warehouse through one of our, through one booking. And that includes your barge and, and logistics movements to, to be able to have that dredge uh, portion handled on, on our end. Um, we're also working on transloading options uh, for the stuffing of cargo uh, to and from containers um, through through DP World as well. So, so lots of excitement as, as we build on our, our newer entity, DP World Logistics, to, to be able to provide a lot of those, those types of services. Um, from a reefer, uh, pardon me, refrigerated uh, container standpoint, uh, um, the uh, the on dock solutions that we have at Nanaimo uh, in place now for for plugging in as well as uh, service technicians on call uh, enable us to provide a full service uh, um, refrigerated containers being able to come and go uh, from the island through through Nanaimo. So we're really excited about that and the potential there. Obviously, from a seafood standpoint and other types of products that uh, that need to be uh, transported in, in refrigerated uh, temperature controlled containers. Uh, and also from a, from a cost standpoint. So when we think about uh, the trucking costs um, and, and just looking for, for different uh, efficiencies throughout uh, the logistics chain for, for our customers, we believe that the barge really does help to, uh, to address that. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, you get away from that, that short haul uh, trucking uh, portion to, to be able to get it to a marine terminal once you get it over to, uh, to the mainland. But also avoiding things like truck reservation fees uh, at the at the gates themselves uh, because you're not using the, the, the gate itself it's coming through via the barge um, and then for our trucking community um, this means that we'll have a reduced demand on the container truck gate at center and at fraser surrey which we know will lead to more reservation availability for containers that need to come in by truck um, for, for those terminals um, we're also very keen to uh, to work mutually um, with uh, our customers and the ocean lines. Uh, so those lines that I mentioned earlier, certainly not the uh, the end of the list. Uh, we're happy to continue to work um, with, and we are continuing to work with with other lines um, to make equipment available for for customer needs. And so we're we're happy to to have enter into those types of discussions with customers about uh, you know what would make the most sense, which type of equipment, and which lines uh, they, they have uh, preferred uh, 
want the book to work with. Um, and coming soon, uh, we're going to have an online booking platform um, where customers will be able to book containers to the barge with, with the click of a mouse. Um, and really, our, our long term on it is to be able to uh, have customers be able to, to originate and terminate uh, shipments uh, in Nanaimo. So, uh, you know, trying to get something to Shanghai and being able to book it um, online uh, through our system that, that gives you rates as well as timelines for, for a shipment that would go through Nanaimo onto a deep sea vessel and to your, to your final destination. So, um, lot, lots of potential, lots of uh, future. Uh, um, advantages coming for, for the short sea shipping service as we continue to develop it. Um, as I mentioned, we're, we're just a few weeks into uh, um, the, uh, the expanded service uh, where we call Fraser Surrey and uh, Centrum and Nanaimo. Um, so we're continuing to, to build on, on that experience as we, we get more and more of it. Um, so uh, lots of interesting possibilities, as, as I mentioned, and, and just different ways that we can get more value out of your logistics change, and we're here to help. Um, so you can see my contact information there. I uh, also have my colleague and, and friend Rajiv's uh, contact information listed um, there. Uh, happy to share that if you, if you don't get a chance to, to write that uh, down, um, but uh, please feel free to reach out, email, or phone call. Um, we're, we're happy to, to talk through, uh, you know, big or small shipments, whatever, whatever you may have for, for questions or concerns. Rajiv and I are definitely here to, to help where we can. Um, so that uh, concludes uh, more of the formal part of my presentation. I'll, I'll turn it back over to George uh, for any uh, questions uh, that may have come in through for, for the chat that I'd be happy to, to work through. Brady and Cabaret, thank you very much for your, for your presentation. Uh, one quick question for you uh, relative to uh, less than full load uh, containers. Like, can people bring uh, partial container loads to the dock and, and have it containerized? Or how, how would they handle something like that? Yeah, we don't presently have that uh, that service, George. Um, but uh, but it's something that uh, you know maybe a possibility either that we partner with in the future with uh, warehouse providers. Um, uh, I know that a lot of that takes place right now in the Lower Mainland, and but I also know there's quite a few projects that are um, that are out there for Vancouver Island that'll have that type of service for for warehousing and consolidation of cargo into the containers. But but to answer your question more directly, no, we we don't have that presently at at the terminal in Nanaimo. Great, thank thank you. And for everyone's for everyone's awareness, we uh, we will be uh, we are recording this session, and it will be will be posted later on ftzvi.com. So thank you very much for Tebere and and Brady. We'll move on to the the next part of our program. So I, I, at this time, I'd like to invite uh, Matthew uh, to make a presentation about the services available from Westwood Shipping Lines. Welcome, Matthew. Thank you, George. Uh, we'll wait for our friends at DP World to pull that off the screen. There we go. <laughs> um, thank you, George, and thank you to the Vancouver Island Economic Alliance for hosting today's webcast, and in particular, reaching out to Westwood Shipping Lines, providing us the opportunity to participate and introduce to your members our proposed West Coast Far East Service Calling Point. And I'll make sure we can share this. Sorry, guys. I'm assuming we can all see this. Yes, looks good. All right, thank you. Um, who are Westwood Shipping Lines? For those of you who do know us, I hope this presentation will serve as a refresher. And for those who don't, I'm pleased to make the introduction. Westwood Shipping Lines was established in 1980 to provide a liner service to North American force product producers to Japan. Westwood Shipping Lines today is a wholly owned subsidiary of a consortium of Japanese stevedore companies. Westwood Shipping Lines is a niche ocean carrier operating a fleet of vessels providing liner transportation services between the Pacific Northwest to regularly scheduled ports in Japan, South Korea, and, Japan, and China. Our approach to success is personal service and versatility combined with reliable schedules, competitive pricing, and superior handling capabilities to safely transport your cargo. It's Westwood Shipping Lines people that make the difference. Our dedicated customer service and delivery teams provide a personalized approach that is unique in today's transportation environment, which brings us why we're here today. The proposed Westwood Shipping Lines proposed direct call to Duke Point. 
uh, we we know that moving products on and off Vancouver Island is to be a, it's a challenge. Uh, arranging to move products to and from lower mainland warehouses, transloads to carrier terminals requires the coordination of many moving parts, each with specific deadlines to meet. Lower mainland businesses don't face many of these same challenges. Our direct call to Duke Point Terminal will level the playing field, allowing Vancouver Island businesses to find efficiencies and reduce costs by streamlining supply chains and distribution pipelines. Scheduling a direct call to Duke Point offers advantages to Vancouver Island business. Dedicated vessel space allocated each sailing, local access to container supply, growth opportunities to trade for trade, base port rates competitively priced with lower mainland terminals, and quick turn time for cargo that's ready for shipment. As it was expressed before and earlier, Westwood Shipping Lines have committed to three trial shipments in April, May, and June. I'm very pleased to advise our April shipment completed and sailed on April 15th, having loaded two and a half million board feet of lumber and over 140 foot loaded and empty containers. Um, on that note, it's important that I recognize our trial shipments uh, would not have been possible without reaching an agreement with our customer, Western Forest Products, to carry and ship two and a half million board feet of packaged lumber, as well as the ongoing support of our partners at BP World and Total Lumber. Westwood Shipping Lines operates three integrated westbound service strings that provide our customers in Japan and Korea weekly eastbound sailing. Our service one string is split into two, one string that covers Japan, Korea, and the other to China. Service one strings are covered by our four open hatch container fitted vessels operating on, operating on a fixed day rotation, making a combined total of 26 voyages annually, annually between the two services. If you note under the westbound and eastbound vessel profile, you can see the flexible container bulk vessel de design that we operate that permits safe and efficient handling of all types of cargo from many different industry sectors. Oversized cargo, containers, bulk, and project cargo routinely sail on our west, together on our Westwood shipping line vessels. Our service string two, which is our dedicated container service to Japan and Korea, are covered by three geared container ships that operate on a 42-day rotation, also making a combined total of 26 voyages annually. Service one and service two schedules. You'll note the extent of extensive Japan port coverage, which is genuinely unique and reason for us being top of class among trans-Pacific carriers to, into Japan. We have predictable sailing schedules as well as providing customers with reliable service performance. Safety and environment are paramount at Westwood Shipping Lines. We continually manage and strive to improve on our programs to help us minimize our operations impact on personnel, cargo, in the environment, whether on border vessels or on shore. Vancouver Fraser Port Authority has recognized Westwood Shipping Lines on multiple occasions with Blue Circle Awards, actually as recently as a week ago, for our voluntary efforts to conserve energy, reduce emissions in the Port of Vancouver. The awards recognize industry partners that excel in environmental stewardship and attain the highest level of participation in the Port Authority's eco-action program and energy initiative. As I mentioned earlier, we're performing three trial shipments, April, May, and June, under our agreement with Western Forest Products. Having just completed the April shipment a couple of weeks back at Duke Point, um, I thought I'd, I'd toss in some photos for your enjoyment. Um, you'll note in this picture, uh, lumber packages and containers that are lined up on Duke Point for loading on the Westwood Columbia. And of course, the weather couldn't have been better when we uh, took these pictures. Actually, I got to do a little plug in here for um, uh, Doug Wortley. Um, Doug supplied these photos. They were done by uh, they, were, they were done by by a drone that Doug piloted, and um, I, I got to tell you, we actually just took delivery earlier this morning of a video that Doug presented to us, uh, and I hope that all of you will will remain or take advantage of sticking around at the end of the of this uh, discussion to take a look at the video. Um, it's great, perfect weather, and you actually get a real good sense of the operations that go on on the dock and what happens when we load cargo on the ship. So. Uh, I hope you stick around. Thank you. Um, here we are. We're loading containers alongside at Duke Point. Some of the products that we also carry that we would load off the island and at Duke Point would be some paper and rolls and and uh, and some pulp. Um, one item of note um, 
in the lower left hand corner of the picture in the lower left corner, you can see we have one of our rain curtains deployed, which protects paper rolls or pulp uh, from bad weather. Um, admittedly, it's not often we have to deploy the curtains given how infrequent it rains here in, in the Pacific Northwest, but however, it's nice to have the extra level of protection when needed for loading weather sensitive cargo. Here we are loading, uh, loading lumber alongside a dew point. You can see the operations, Stephen Orr is getting ready to hoist and hook up the lumber. Lumber stowed inside the holds and uh, the gear bringing the, the package lumber down into the holds. Um, this isn't a typical cargo we're gonna load here on the West Coast, but I thought I'd throw in the pictures in any event. Um, it, it does represent what we load from Japan and Korea on our eastbound voyages. Um, having completed loading the first trial shipment at Duke Point, we were advised by our agent in Japan overnight, the Westwood Columbia has arrived safely in Japan and on schedule. So I'd like to close off with the often quoted adage, if you build it, they will come. I generally wish this were the case. Uh, our proposed West Coast, our Far East service from Duke Point will only happen with the full support of Vancouver Island business. Um, I'm hopeful that being part of this webcast will reach a level of inquiry that will go some way to determine whether there's sufficient demand and an ongoing commitment to induce the direct call to Duke Point and ensure service viability and longevity. On behalf of my colleagues at Westwood Shipping Lines, I'd like to say thank you and appreciate you joining us today. Thank you very much, Matthew. And I'd, I'd like to invite those of you now who are, are wishing more information regarding these opportunities to, uh, to join our roundtable conversation. Uh, so we invite you to turn on your video uh, so that we can all see each other and so that I can moderate uh, questions and answers. Uh, if you have a question, please raise your hand uh, to be acknowledged and uh, please keep your microphones off unless you're invited to speak. Uh, so Jason, Matthew, Brady, Tabaret will be happy to answer, answer any questions you might you might have. So does anyone have a question they would like to ask? I think they're all waiting for the video at the end, George. <laughs> So uh, Matthew, I'll, I'll ask you a question. You, you mentioned earlier that um, you know, the, you're essentially your, your anchor tenant for being able to, uh, to do this work is Western Forest Products uh, lumber headed for, for Asia. Um, what, what other kind of, uh, of containerized opportunities? Uh, can, you, can you detail that a, a bit more like a size of a container, the, uh, the the, the frequency you're looking at uh, beyond May and June of this year, we're, we're in a trial time, but what, what, is, the, what is the future outlook uh, from your perspective? Well, to, in terms of the future outlook, I, I, re, I remain really positive that we'll put something together and keep this as an ongoing, uh, ongoing call and part of our service schedule. Um, containers, what can I say about containers? 20 and 40 foot lengths, uh, and you put in whatever you want to load uh, into those containers and, and we'll carry them off the island to where to our particular scheduled uh, ports of call. Um, but typically what we would see on an export, we'd see pulp loaded in containers. We'd see, even though we saw the packaged lumber in bulk, packaged, lumbers, packaged lumber goes in containers, um, remarkably free flowing cargo like grain, sulfur, they all get loaded in containers uh, and presumably um, we'd see some, I guess, some manufactured goods coming off the island, uh, some retail items, things like seaweed, packaged seaweed, bottled water. Um, so really, it's, it's, um, there's a lot that moves in containers. And, and, uh, and I hope that what ends up happening is because of this discussion today, um, it does open the door and, and will provide us an opportunity to have those discussions with people to fill them in, fill in the blanks, what we can do for them. Um, so, fingers crossed. This is not just uh, not three uh, scheduled sailings, but it's an ongoing monthly or bi-monthly service. 
And and uh, Brady, I I asked this question of you earlier relative to the less than full load uh, opportunities. You know, I'm I'm assuming that, you know, we have quite a number of um, advanced manufacturers or food producers, et cetera, on the island that are not necessarily at the moment uh, producing the kinds of volumes that would fill a 20 or 40 foot container. But I'm thinking there there perhaps is opportunity for someone or someone's uh, in the distribution business, for instance, perhaps uh, on the island to, to be able to aggregate product from, uh, from a number of different um, producers to, uh, to fill containers for, for certain destinations. Is, do, you see, do you see that as, uh, as an opportunity? Turn your mic on. Sorry, <laughs> thanks George. Um, absolutely, no, I mean, that, that business model is, uh, is existing around the world where, where those uh, services are offered for, for those types of shippers. And it's something that's certainly there's potential the DP world enters that at some point in the future. Um, you know, at, at the moment we're looking at, uh, you know, the, the idea of, of stuffing and de-stuffing things that uh, require forklift handling in and out uh, of the container. Uh, but you know, pick and pack concept and those types of things to be able to deal with uh, less than container loads is certainly something that uh, I think is an opportunity as, as the Vancouver Island market continues to grow. And uh, just to add on to that, uh, George, as well, I think if, um, I mean, for those that have a demand for that, we can certainly partner with other organizations uh, so they can provide the service and we can combine that with the uh, with either the barge service or directly uh, going into Nanaimo with the uh, with the Westwood call right so that's something that's yeah we can definitely do now right I also know that um, uh, I've had conversations with a, with a number of uh, businesses on the island that are you know, ordering and bringing products in for elsewhere in the world. So I, I know a, a story, for instance, from a, from a business in the Parksville Qualicum area, where they're they're purchasing equipment in Italy, for instance, and needing to get that equipment shipped to Vancouver Island. And and their story is that it it, it usually costs them as much to to ship it from Vancouver to Vancouver Island as it costs them to ship it from Italy to to Vancouver. Uh, is there is there something in all of this where someone that is ordering such products from elsewhere could now designate the DP term, terminal at Duke Point as the destination and save some time and money? Yes, exactly, George. Oh, sorry, Tabra, if you want to. Uh, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, no. So, so what, and I think one of the advantages now of having that connection to Fraser Surrey is that we have those European services, uh, some that do call to Italy. Uh, for that specific example, um, that will so the container will end up directly at, at Fraser Surrey, and and then can essentially within the week load onto the barge to be brought over to Nanaimo. Um, so it should address uh, you know a, a lot of that concern that that potential customer would have of uh, uh, that uh, cost to bring it across. So yeah, we can get that container very quickly over to uh, uh, to Nanaimo and, and closer to their site. So if someone had that situation and wanted more detail, did they contact you or did they contact Matthew? Well, I think that would be a great starting point for it to at least go through the conversation and understand the specifics around it. So yeah, I'd be happy to be the starting point for that. And, and then within our, our network with DP World and, and our customers and, uh, and vendors, we can, we can work out solutions. Okay. I have a question here about transit between uh, Manila PH to Duke Point. Uh, is there is there opportunity there with with either of you from, from the from Manila? Well, like, like, we our services don't cover cover the Philippines, um, but traditionally the transit time I I couldn't tell you, but 20, 25 days from the Philippines into the West Coast. Yeah, and likely what you'd see for connecting in, into Vancouver would be a trans uh, a transload of, uh, or pardon me, transshipment of that container. So it would go to a hub, um, maybe it would head north from the Philippines um, to connect with one of some of the Far East services to then come over uh, to connect. Okay, so that so they they need to figure out how to get the product from the Philippines to one of your hubs. In 
Yeah, and, and so, and not, not necessarily one of one of uh, our hubs it would have to be, it would really be like through the steamship line, uh, as far as, uh, you know, origin and destination, they'd look at what are the options there to try to find, okay, where is that right transship point to be able to get it to the best uh, uh, transit time to, to bring it into Vancouver. But, you know, certainly there's going to be options there. There is that, uh, you know, additional hurdle of having the transship. And so what that means is that it's going to come in on one vessel into a port discharge off of the vessel and then go on to another, uh, just like when you're connecting on your flights uh, to, you know, try to get uh, to New York or something and you have to go through Chicago. Or those types of things. So can they, can they designate that container then to, to also go to Duke Point? It just, it just would use different services to get there? Yeah, that's what we're working on right now. I made brief mention of it earlier in the presentation is that we want to have an online platform that will enable that. Uh, that but just like when you're looking at Expedia and trying to book that flight to New York, that you can see where the connections are, try to find the best way through there and what the cost uh, and timelines would be. Um, but yeah, it's not, not in presently uh, rolled out, but that is something that we're working towards. Yeah, I have a question here. Uh, someone says, I have a question for Matthew, uh, 42 days transit Vancouver to Manila. Uh, uh, no, that was just giving you information, George. Yeah, yeah. I, it's Janina at Western Forest Products. Okay. I have a question for Matthew. If yep. there is no break bulk loading, what is the minimum number of containers you need to load to course to call Nanaimo Port? And a second part is, are you going to, is Westwood going to increase allocations available for loading at Nanaimo? Currently, we're limited to 20 cans per vessel. <laughs> and you know my conversation on this one. Yeah. <laughs> so what what are you looking at for the future for containers in Nanaimo? Because that could be increased dramatically. Yeah. Well, first of all, Janine, I should say thank you very much for the support. Janine is with Western Force Products, so I've got to get the plug in there. Um, more importantly, Janine, you know, it, it's just a matter of of numbers more than anything. We've run some ideas where we think 120 containers per sailing um, would be the ideal number for us to come on into the island. So the way that it worked, uh, if you look at what we've just done with yourselves, two and a half million board feet plus 20 some odd containers, 20, 40 foot containers, more than provided the, the opportunity for us to come into the island. Uh, depending on how many board feet of lumber you get into it. So to answer your question, we'll we'll shoot a target for 120 40 foot containers for us to call the island. Not a big volume, and we feel confident that 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 uh, that sits and resides on Vancouver Island. It's just up to us to to get that out of the business community. Um, in terms of what we can do uh, in allocation by customer. Um, I think that just comes through evolution of time. You know, what is what we develop on the island, what the customer bases are, or what the customer base is. And, uh, and certainly for you, Janine, um, yeah, I, I think it's one of those discussions that we would take offline. And absolutely, we could, I'm more than happy to entertain the idea of providing you a, a greater allocation on containers uh, than what we arranged uh, as a combination of break bulk and containers. I, I, I hope that answered the question. Uh, yeah, that answered it, and I like. We'll have a discussion when I'm back in the office, the office next week. Okay, wonderful. Thanks. Thank you, you Janine. Thank you, Matthew. Uh, question from Mark Smith. Hi, sorry. I think it's, I think it was you, Brady, and your uh, about the um, containers that are available, and there was a reference to refrigerated containers. Is that a, is that option available today? Is that just a request? You just go. I have. I just have a requirement for a refrigerated container. Yeah, we've got uh, everything in place to, to get it off the ground, uh, Mark. We, we've uh, we're going to have plugs and and all of that in place, but it's it's a short timeline that we would need to do it about a two week lead time to be able to get uh, um, everything active and, and up and running. Um, but yeah, in a very short time frame, we can have that uh, working. Okay, great. Thank you. I'll probably, I'll reach out. I have some questions. Please do. Yes. Thank you. Steve Hughes has a question. A couple of questions, I think. Are you going to put me on the spot, George? I have to read my own question. <laughs> so uh, I guess, you know, not, not super versed in this, but how does dealing with DP World differ than dealing with like a K&N who we're using now? 
Yeah. So from from a freight forwarding standpoint, I think that there's there's still a huge value of having someone like like, like KNN in there. Um, maybe what I'll do is uh, I see Rajiv uh, from a logistics standpoint. Uh, I'll pass that over to you, Rajiv, just to, to chat a little bit about from a service offering standpoint. But I think we still see a, a value of having Bernagel in, involved in these things. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Brady, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, thanks, Steve, for, for the question. So. As you know, DP Wall uh, has been on the marine terminal side of the business. So it's very recent that we are uh, diving into uh, the supply chain and the logistics side of the business. So um, this is at the infancy level. Um, and our uh, initial, uh, you know, we are working on different verticals. And one of the verticals is short sea shipping, which we are trying to connect the cargo uh, uh, from, uh, from to and from uh, island to different terminals on the mainland. However, we are expanding our logistic services uh, into 3PL, uh, first mile, last mile, bridge, and all that stuff. Um, we are also working on the NVOCC. So we recently got our, um, uh, our uh, license uh, to, to run the NVOCC business, and we are working on some system to, to connect our uh, you know, agency network, uh, especially in Asia. So once we have that set up uh, already ready, we can we can give customer end-to-end -end solution to pick up like first mile to, uh, to work with the ocean carrier as a partner and get the product somewhere in Vancouver. And if it is going to island, definitely use the barge services. And we can also uh, do the last mile deliveries to, to the customer on the, on the door if they need you know, some Victoria, some other you know, cities, um, we can arrange that. So end-to-end -end supply chain. So yes, we are working on that. The, the challenge is right now, as everybody is aware, the supply chain and especially on the ocean side, it's been extremely challenging to, to procure some rates. Um, the, the, the market is, is, uh, is changing uh, every two weeks. Uh, rates are skyrocketing. Like uh, I got a quote from Shanghai to Vancouver somewhere in the range of like $10,000. Hmm. So that, that has been a challenge. So we yeah. put that, uh, you know, uh, for, for, you know, a little bit back burner, but of course the, the whole idea is to, 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 to provide the service, something like Kuninagel is doing, or, you know, Shankers is doing, but, but again, they've been in this business last many, many years. So they're very robust system. We are, we are working towards that, uh, taking the leverage of our terminal knowledge and our short sea shipping barge and trying to see how we can entice everything piecemeal together, everything and give one, you know, one uh, service to our end customer, because even if, Somebody is going through, say, Siva uh, Logistic, DSV, or Panalpina, or whatever, then they have to eventually, if it is island cargo, they have to work through DB World because they have to use the barge service and all that stuff. Rather, we would provide customer end to end solution. But we are just working on the, the ocean side of the business, rest, everything is already in place. Just to answer your question, Steve. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll reach out to you afterwards because we've, we've been bringing in quite a well, a bit from Bangkok, and then we have been storing in Vancouver and then trucking over. And, and yeah, with, with delays with sea shipping is crazy right now, as you know, yeah. never mind the price. So we've, we've just started looking at actually using KNN to transship containers over here. And we're kind of thinking about, should we do the bulk of our warehousing more in uh, on the island here as opposed to in Vancouver? So just trying to think yeah. a little bit further ahead. Let's connect offline and probably we can work together to see uh, what kind of solution we can offer. Sure, sounds good, thanks. And, and these comments, uh, Steve, also uh, take us to another question from, uh, uh, from Chris, who's asking uh, what the outlook is for industrial land around Duke Point. And I'll, I'll, uh, I'll send this one in Jason's direction, but, but I'll, I'll make a comment too, that uh, I know that the uh, City of Nanaimo is a, is about to uh, reinitiate their uh, their new economic development plan for the for the city, and that in that plan they are recognizing the the demand and and future demand for uh, for warehousing and distribution and and small manufacturing etc. And, and to encourage more industrial land um, connected to Duke Point. Because they are they are also recognizing uh, the existence of the foreign trade zone and what that means on Vancouver Island and the opportunity connected to our ports and airports. Uh, so, Jason, do you have any uh, any thoughts and information regarding uh, where we're headed with uh, available industrial land nearby? Turn your mic on, please. There you go. Thanks, George. 
Yeah, no, as you said, the city of Nanaimo, I think it all kind of starts there, right, is having the support from the community to be able to unlock the industrial and the commercial side of things. So right now there's a development out there at Key Corp and they are there's hundreds of acres that they've got on the market right now and they're going through the development and permitting process for Duke Point. Um, it's along the Duke Point Highway within a few minutes of the terminal, um, within five minutes of the airport, within five minutes of, you know, just the general transportation of Duke Point. So the industrial land is there and it's the location of it that's also interesting, right? Keeping out of residential areas, keeping it in industrial locations while at the same time having it on the main highway, right? You're highway one to go north and south, again, five minutes from the Duke Point terminal. So. Uh, it's, it's really exciting and having the city of Nanaimo and I'm participating on the economic development committee and having a component of that is the growth of Duke Point. They recognize, as you said, George, the value of the, the, the land at Duke Point being developed for warehousing, distribution, manufacturing to service not only, you know, uh, the Vancouver Island area, which is a main focus, but what can we do to help service Western Canada with the land drying up in the lower mainland and, and warehousing and distribution locations in the lower mainland being pushed further and further out of the city. What are those trucking implications? What are the costs of those trucking implications rather than using the short sea service? So it's, I hope I answered the question, but there's another project coming online, we think in the next near future here with more acreage, but I hope that answers the question. Great, thank, thank you, Jason. Uh, I have another question. Uh, um, for Brady, the question is, uh, what carriers are you working with to initiate direct calls to Nanaimo, uh, e.g. Costco, uh, Evergreen, Banks? Yeah, I, I mean, to answer the question, uh, honestly, we're working with everybody that we can. Um, the, the reality is, is that uh, there's steamship lines, there's going to be larger vessels that, that need the, the infrastructure um, of some of the larger terminals um, that, that won't be viable for us. But the, the good thing about it is that within each steamship line, they have different services and different vessel sizes. And so there may be some fits um, elsewhere. But uh, but yeah, certainly we're, we're dealing with uh, all of the major uh, container lines to, to look at the possibilities of, uh, of calling it into Nanaimo. Uh, as well as uh, the the multi-purpose carriers and, and break ball carriers of the world. Uh, obviously, we've got the you know prime example right now with Westwood shipping lines, um, where there's been a good fit from a customer standpoint with uh, WFP um, at uh, DP World and, and Westwood shipping lines. So those are the types of, of, of anchor tenants that, that we need to see, as Matthew mentioned in his presentations, to be able to to get that regularity of the calls. Um, but uh, but yeah, I can't share any, I guess anything specific to say you know we've got this service that they could come in an X timeline. Um, but we're, we're working with and talking with each line to say, you know, this is what we see for the future in Nanaimo. We see the larger and growing marketplace there on the island um, that, that, that the lines uh, would, would be enticed to, to try to access. Great, thank you. Other questions? And, and John, just to compliment on just what Brady said, uh, temporarily, if the, if the demand is not very strong out of island to to attract some, you know, uh, ocean carriers to call uh, Nanaimo directly, uh, they do support in terms of uh, empty container availability. So uh, that can be a starting point. And once we grow with the specific shipping line um, to a specific trade lane, well, Latin America, Mexico, Europe, whatever it is, that that would be the the point of discussion with the shipping line and say, okay, this is what uh, regularly originating from island can be rather than bringing it uh, to the barge and connecting on the uh, from the mainland can can you make a call so the, the vessel in and out is from that area it's just a diversion of you know the half a day or i don't know uh, one day uh, that cost should be uh, you know uh, offset with uh, with the this uh, additional business what they could generate so but right now um, most of the shipping lines are supporting uh, our initiative uh, of uh, of island business and in terms of empty equipment availability um, so uh, we have many carriers already partnering on that and uh, the customers are currently using uh, those uh, shipping lines, uh, empty containers. Thank you, thank you. Any other questions before we close? Okay, um, Brady, Matthew, um, Jason, any, any final words that you'd like to share? 
Uh, no, again, just to express appreciation uh, to everyone for their time and, and joining us today. Lots of good questions, and, and we want to continue the discussion. You know, to, to build on Rajiv's point, when we, we talk about the the short sea shipping and, and the deep sea side, um, really we see you know the proof coming out in the pudding of of the the short sea version. If that uh, you know builds to capacity, we need to continue to add barges and sailings there. Then that starts to make more and more of that case for for the direct calls into uh, in, into Nanaimo. So we're excited to to be here for for the build, and uh, please reach out any questions uh, that that come up. Matthew? I would simply echo what Brady said, just reach out to us to have a conversation and we'll do what we can to uh, give the idea of what we're doing, um, how we can help you and uh, what we see for the future. But, um, you know, we're, we're there. We want to call into the island. Uh, we'll put equipment there um, for access to the local market. So um, I'd love to see the inquiries. Love to have more questions fired our way. So thank you. Jason? Uh, uh, thanks to you, George, for yeah, putting this on, making sure, you know, you obviously got a great crowd here. Thank you for bringing everybody together, to Brady and, and Matthew as well, for helping highlight the service and Rajiv. Um, you know, when they talk about what's going on right now, and we're talking about the future, right? So how do we further help complement the service and further boost the service by whatever opportunities we can gather with the land and, and, and help contribute to the, you know, the the growth here at Duke Point and Nanaimo to support the system. So thank you very much to everybody for joining us. Well, and it's, it's our pleasure to, uh, to host this uh, two gentlemen, because the, you know, we, we identified opportunity to, to build our capacity for, uh, for, for manufacturing, for goods production on Vancouver Island and the importance of that for, for our local economy. Uh, and identified the opportunity to, uh, to go after foreign trade zone designation back at our economic summit in 2017. And we were successful in, uh, in getting that designation in 2018. We see this as a, a next step in that process that, that improves the access to the rest of the world uh, through the facilities that we have. So we're, we're delighted to see this happening. Uh, Brady and Matthew, uh, thank you. Thank you for the Port of Nanaimo for, uh, for figuring out how to get the, uh, the infrastructure investment to make this happen. And now it's really about us communicating with, uh, with those on the island that are, that are importing and exporting uh, goods uh, to know that there are, there are new ways and more efficient ways to, uh, to, to do that from direct from, from here. So thank you all. And, uh, and those of you that would like to uh, stay on for five more minutes, uh, we'll, we'll watch that, um, that drone video that, uh, that Matthew was talking about. And I, I looked at this video earlier and what stood out to me is the, the immediacy of this. You know, we are often talking about what could happen, what might happen if, well, this, is, this video footage is, uh, is actual footage from April, 2021 at Duke Point, um, loading uh, containers of cargo from Vancouver Island. So Diana, if you would start that, please. And thank you all for joining us. Thank you, everybody.